Filara Denisenko decided to stage a coup in the Oku and take away power from Epiphany. Hardly had Petro Poroshenko lost the presidential election as Filaret launched an attack on the joint project of the former president and Fana. The honorary patriarch said that the Oku was divided and he intends to reinstate the Kiev Patriarchate, which, as everyone assured, had been dissolved. <laughs> At the beginning of May, Filara Denisenko sent an invitation to the Oku bishops to the meeting where he planned to agree on the restoration of the status quo, that is, Filaret led Kiev Patriarchate. Invitations were printed out on official letterheads of the UOCKP. Supporters of Epiphany began to sound the alarm immediately. All media resources led by TSN Channel were mobilized, which only recently advertised Thomas and praised Filaret up to the skies. Now they are dragging a recent idol through the mud and accuse him of splitting. То не же ж власними руками хоче знищити незалежну українську церкву тих, хто стільки років за неї боровся. Owing to the media wave race, the majority of the Oku hierarchs were afraid to go to the meeting with Filaret. As a result, only four bishops came to meet with him. Such a failure could break down anyone, but not Denisenko. On May 15th, he holds a press conference at which he makes a number of sensational statements. Filaret declares that the Unification Council at which the Oku was born was not Ukrainian but Greek, that the Oku is not a new structure at all and that the Kiev Patriarchate has not disappeared but continues to exist. The statute that was taken to the Sofia on the 15th of June Це статут Грецької церкви, і дії його закінчуються отриманням Томасу. Ми не будуємо нову церкву, бо ми чуємо так, що ми починаємо будівництво нової церкви, а та, яка була до собору, то ми до цієї церкви не маємо відношення. Ми що від неї і відмовляємось? Ні, не відмовляємось, це є продовження. Asked if he signed the document on dissolution of the Kiev Patriarchate, Filaret says he did. But it does not mean anything, since otherwise the Thomas wouldn't have been granted to Ukraine. Підписував. Чому підписував? Як тимчасове явище для того, щоб отримав Томас. Без цього Вселенський патріарх не мав права надати нам Томас. When a journalist asked whether Filaret was afraid that his actions would provoke the revocation of the Thomas, he responds completely indifferently. Something like, they may take it away or may not take it away. Thomas, or not, it's not it is clear that the Thomas, which in Ukraine has almost become an object of worship through the efforts of Petro Poroshenko and Filaret, does not interest Filaret in as much as the issue of recognition or non-recognition of the Oku. He cares only about power.
Whilst the hand of Moscow in the rhetoric of Filaret, like the others in the Kiev Patriarchate, used to be exclusively bishops of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, now, according to Filaret, they have penetrated into the Oka ranks. This is the reason why not a single local church except for Fanar has recognized the new structure so far, in Filaret's opinion. Nikto is inshik cerko ne vyznaye ukrainsku cerku ya. Не тільки як патріархат, а не визнає і як українську православну церкву. І поки що ми не бачимо шляхів, які привели до визнання. То для чого? Чому вони не визнають? Причин багато, але головна причина – Москва. І в Україні вона, вона ж та ж Москва діє, але ж уже тепер не через московський патріархат, а через нас же, коли наші ж архиреї виступають проти того, що вони створили, проти київського патріархату. Filaret claims that Epiphany is not able to lead the church on his own. Somebody else does it for him. Who it is, Filaret doesn't say. Правда полягає в тому, що не він керує, а ним керують. І він мені прямо сказав, не все від мене залежить. Filaret claims that prior to the creation of the Oku, there was an oral agreement between him, Petro Poroshenko and Epiphany, that Epiphany would be a kind of non-executive figurehead to represent Oku in the international arena. In reality, though, this structure was supposed to be led by Filaret. Теж і не тільки між нами трьома, а й з архіреями. І на архірейському соборі була, була та ж домовленість, що я продовжую керувати церквою на території України разом з Діпіфанієм, а він представляє церкву назовні. А я не представляю церкву на зубі. Отака домовність. However, Poroshenko with Epiphany deceived the gullible old man and removed him from the leadership of the new structure. Ми не, 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 не підписували, тому що я довіряв. І президенту не довіряв, і Епіфанію довіряв. А вони обманули. In fact, Filaret said that during the creation of the Oku, he and Poroshenko were trying to deceive Patriarch Bartholomew by electing Epiphany as a puppet primate. But in the end, Epiphany and Poroshenko conspired to outwit Filaret himself, having removed him from management. Я, як патріарх, повинен керувати українською церквою на території України. А, а він від цього відмовився і керує сам. Мало того, навіть на, на першому синоді поставили питання про те, щоб мене взагалі на спокій відправити. Довіряв йому стопроцентово. А те, що я йому довіряв, бо якби я за нього не боровся, how can one call the Oku in light of all these revelations? Perhaps scandal would be the best term. When the hierarchs of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church after the Unification Council of the Oku warned that two groups of schismatics couldn't mechanically create the canonical church, no one in Ukrainian society believed them. 
Metropolitan Anthony, even in winter at the time of the Ocus triumph, said that all this would quickly end and it would end in disgrace. Таких подій в нашій історії було дуже багато. Такі події, які колись оцінювалися в той час великими подіями, а потім були позором і для церковної історії, і для тих людей, які підписували такі документи. Взагалі документи різні, в різний час підписували і Натікони, і Уні, і Томоси, але все це, на жаль, дуже часто слугувало для християн якимись складнощами в житті, а взагалі про них тільки сьогодні знають тільки ті люди, які займаються церковною історією. But why then, when everyone was shouting vigorously that the OCU would unite all the Orthodox, the hierarchs of the UOC already knew that this structure would soon collapse. It would seem that everything was going perfectly with the OCU. Petro Poroshenko and many others stated that with the creation of this structure, the centuries-old aspirations of the Ukrainian people were fulfilled. A single church was created which was recognized by Constantinople and was about to be recognized by the whole world. Filaret made sure that its head was not an outsider from the UOC Simeon nor authoritarian Mikhail Zinkevich, but Filaret's loyal personal AD, Epiphany Dumenko. The government in fact created the Oku so that it would be its favorite court church. Hundreds of temples were taken away from the Ukrainian Orthodox Church and transferred to the Oku. Ideal greenhouse conditions were created, but nevertheless, Poroshenko is gone and a split occurs immediately. As a result, the Oku turns out to be initially founded on intrigues and lies. When politicians and deputies deceive people and each other, we are no longer surprised, we are used to that. But this cannot be the case in the Church. We can see how violently people in politics rush to power and how hard it is for them to part with it. We can see how precious the power is to fill it. But Christ said something completely different. Whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Why can't Filaret leave? Because he cannot live by the Gospel. Filaret is not the only one in the Oku. Another notorious UOC KP hierarch Mikhail Zinkevich directly and honestly said he did not give up the intention to become the Oku head. The rest have the same mindset. Why don't the Oku epochs unite with each other? Why don't its members trust each other or even hate each other? Well, everything is simple, because although they were vestments, they think in exactly the same way as MPs of the Ukrainian parliament. The formal legalization on the part of Constantinople did not change them internally. Christ said, I will build my church on a stone, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. Indeed, the Ukrainian Orthodox Church in the days of the toughest pressure withstood and grew even stronger, while the Oku collapses itself despite the ideal conditions. Is it a set of circumstances? Hardly.